Hello, Billy Reeves here. Welcome to the K-Scope podcast, a long chat with our dear friend John Gom coming up to celebrate the single black vinyl pressing of his album, The Faintest Idea. And music similarly from K-Scope's new vinyl restocks, Marius Duda, Tesseract, Lunatic Soul, Tangerine Dream, and this one, Blackfield from Blackfield 5. How was your ride? We're like the weather You can't predict it, we never tick with the time Heavy shackles We can't move freely, we're leaving trails on the ground It's too late to wipe away now You cynical bastard But you're late from your plate So how, how was your ride? Stephen Wilson, Aviv Geffen, collectively Blackfield from Blackfield 5, now out as a single LP edition. That's called How Was Your Ride? And before we hear from John Gom, this from the single vinyl edition, out now, of The Faintest Idea, Ghost Inside You.
The marvellous John Gong, Ghost Inside You, from the new single vinyl edition of The Faintest Idea, out now. Caught up with John uh, this week. Me in my studio, him in his. He's been to Transylvania. I've been to this festival once before in 2020, and during the kind of little hiatus, or pseudo-hiatus, the kind of false dawn in late 2020, and it was so weird, and I was so kind of messed up in my head anyway with just the state of the pandemic and the worry and just the fact that I hadn't been able to play or do loads of different stuff or see people or and just worry about my you know my daughter and stuff and I was really in a total state to be honest mentally and um I had really struggled I really struggled just to get on the stage it was just so I was so stressed and just I kind of had this awful confluence of being incredibly stressed and also not seeing the point of doing it, which is a, a weird, like, those sums don't add up to anything good, really. But anyway, the promoter, who's lovely and also a, gu- a gu- guitarist himself, and he's called uh, Istvan Becke, and he just got me on the stage by being so nice and just reassuring and helping me out and just basically looking after me. And I got through it, and then, you know, by the time I'd been on stage I was a couple of songs in. I was, it was just, I was doing a lot better, partly because the audience was so amazing and so kind of sympathetic. I don't know if they kind of, sometimes I'll just say exactly how I'm feeling on the stage, but I don't remember if I did or not. But it was, um, but they certainly must have picked up on something, but they really looked after me. And by the end of it, it was, it was great. And so just going back this year and being myself again, was incredible. Firstly, just to be invited back, because when you do, when you, you kind of, it, just feeling after that happened, one of the things I thought was, well, they'll never want me back here again. But they asked me to come back as soon as, you know, it's, this is the next one. They didn't have one last year. So they asked me to come back straight away. And um, I just had a really, really amazing time. And it was so great to play to many of the same audience, not exclusively, I'm sure, but many of the same people in the audience for the same promoter and other people who are there because I really felt like I owed them a lot for two years ago. And and the audience in, in Romania, I, well, certainly in my, you know, experience of playing playing there, they're incredibly kind of emotionally open, happy to accept. I get a, fun, a lot of funny looks walking around the street and someone like that, because, you know, I've got, you know, my little mohawk and my weird clothes and my black nail, fingernails, and I just, I just generally a weird kind of, pseudo punky gothy looking guy and there aren't any i'm the only one that i ever see walking around the streets of a beautiful old town in transylvania but when i got on the, when you get on a stage people kind of expect you to look a bit weird and they don't really care about that stuff and they're just really really welcoming and the audience it's a free event as well so it's 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 a so the actual festival is free to attend there's lots of people who pay to come and have guitar lessons and stuff as part of it but just coming to the main concerts they are free open air concerts so it's a mixture of big fans who've traveled for miles to come and just local people of all ages and all backgrounds and just get kind of you know older older men and older women coming up to me at the end of a gig asking somebody to translate for them into English because they don't speak English to tell me how moved they were by the music and and wanting to get you know a photo and all this stuff and they're just a local person and um that's really really special that it's really amazing just to play to an audience like that and just this pin drop silence do you know what I mean when I, when I'm kind of doing a quiet bit of a song is absolute they're absolutely wrapped attention and it, you don't always get that as a performer as much as you might try or and so yeah it was pretty it was really amazing weekend i feel oh, that's really because really you you've you've spoken about your your yeah. mh before and saying that it's not a creative impulse which perhaps people who don't understand neurodiversity would think that it would be and you've said no i'd rather be i'd rather be happy when i'm yeah creating. it doesn't it's not a hindrance it's not a hindrance right. to it's funny do you know what i think you can draw on those things that you've experienced when you're performing especially if you've got songs that are written about that stuff which i do 
You can draw on it while being happy and you can dare to go down into those dark places a lot more easily knowing that you're going to be able to come up again. Which, uh, so, so I know that, you know, I can play something that's somewhat from somewhere dark and really go there and really let myself go there, even if it's like a really painful subject and I can come back out again afterwards because I know that I'm mentally healthy. If you don't feel that you are mentally healthy, you can be really scared to get down there, you know, because it, it can really s s swallow you up. Um, but I suppose you have to have experienced that stuff to do that. But, but, but I think everybody's experienced it without necessarily having mental health problems or, or, or chronic mental health problems, even if they've just had it once or twice, or, or if they've just had something bad happen in their lives, you know what I mean? So you don't need to. Yeah. So anyway, it, it, it can be, you know, it's a, it's a thing that you can draw on in, in terms of life experience and something to write about. For sure, okay. yeah. Okay. So, I mean, talking of in-out referendums, it, it amuses me. <laughs> it, it amuse, I mean, obviously, that's, you know, it's, it's such a big thing amongst musicians and people who have to travel now with carnets and gear and, and, all, yeah. sorts, and all sorts of problems. And it amuses, uh -huh. always amuses me to see a photograph of you on a plane with a guitar in the seat next to you. So yeah, is it, is it, I don't is know it, whose guitar that is. It's just a coincidence. <laughs> Every time I get on a plane, it's just a guitar sat next to me. Really weird. I do take it. The I do take the, it. The geezer from. I mean, nobody seems to. Yeah, nobody the, seems to put, put yeah, their the, arm up and say it's there. So I yeah, just the, wonder. Yeah. yeah, it's it's odd. I always pay for a seat. Um, yeah, it's if I can. It's not always reasonable to do that, but often it's not really any more expensive because you've got to pay extra to put it in the hold anyway, and. Um, it's uh, you just know that it's safe. You know that it's not going to get smashed or lost. And, you know, it's like people say, oh, you only travel with one guitar, which again is quite unusual because a lot of people travel with two guitars almost as like a redundancy system. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't need to do that because I've got the one, I only got one, but it's not going to spontaneously combust. You know, I, I don't need to worry about it breaking. It's going to be fine. So it's... um yeah, it, it, I think it's kind of economically actually makes a reasonable amount of sense to do it. But uh, yeah, I do get funny looks, but I'm so used to it now. I'm so used to it now. Like I have to ask for the, um, if this, cause you have to belt it in, right? You have to seat, put a seat belt around it. And if it doesn't fit, you have to get the uh, extra extension that you use if you've got um, like a baby on your lap or whatever. <laughs> so uh, so you have to get, ask, the, ask them for the special extension. One time, one time, I was on jet two, right? And it's a, it's a, which flies as far as I know, only out of Leeds, Bradford airport. And it's just really for, it's really just for holidaymakers and they do like package holidays, but I was, it just happened to be the best flight for me to get. So they, they, I'm one of the few airlines where, you know, you get on the plane and the cabin crew have never seen anybody with an instrument before on a plane and they don't know what to do. So, and Depending on who the, I I know what to do, I can explain all the rules of where it needs to go. It's not allowed to be on the emergency exit. It has to be by the window. There's all these different rules and things, right? But some people don't like having the rules explained to them if it's their job to know the rules. You know, they could take against it, no matter how kindly you try to do it. So this one guy got really stressed and annoyed by my guitar and was telling me that I had to put it like in the hold and I said no I don't have to do that it's got a seat and he got so it was getting really he was getting really stressed and in the end he got a baggage handler to come up and tie it using these kind of tow rope looking things you tie it to the seat and he used about three of these ropes and tied kind of some kind of big boy scout knots in the rope so I just sat and patiently watched him do that and uh, and then I did say to the, to the steward after after the you know the baggage handler left the plane, I said, "Is there somebody who's going to be able to untie this when we land? Because <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able yeah, to do it." Yeah, mate. no no knives on board to cut it out. It, it was really uh, that was a weird one. But there's always there's always been yeah you know, weird. I, yeah, things I, lo like I that. love the I love the fact that it's got to go in the window seat. Yeah, it, needs so to it, get, see it the... gets the it gets the view. Yeah. So it gets the best seat. Yeah, it's just you know, it's just so I can't <laughs> get baby. anyone's way. When, when you have to abandon the plane because you know that's fucking you've fantastic. Got, you've you've that plummeted is... into the sea. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, you can always play a tune as you go down, I guess. Uh, to be honest, I think it make make quite a good flotation device. Oh yes, they float. Well, we'll, we'll see. 
I said, it's, I mean, do you, I give, don't like you, do you give yourself a pat on the back? I mean, you should give yourself a pat on the back that essentially your turn doesn't involve taking a load of amps and Nord electros and synthesizers. It's, 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 it's weird because, yeah, it's funny with like flying because of the kind of environmental carbon output that I'm creating of that. And I do, I don't know, rightly or wrongly, I have justified that in my mind logically by it's like it's it's just me flying i don't have a load of gear i don't take any kind of entourage it's usually literally just me and i'm flying out there to play to so at this festival there's like a thousand people Faintest ideas back out there now as a nice neat single vinyl. What's your relationship with that album like now? So it's so what it's funny because the album now is uh, just a part of like my ca- ca- catalog in a way. It's just a it's something that I just think of as uh, you know canon or whatever. But it's um it's also just it's it's been really different the reaction that people have had to that than anything that I've done before. I just get comments like people saying telling me how much it means to them, how much they, they listen to it and how different songs affect them in different ways and they kind of find them really nourishing and, you know, so it, it's it's really nice to hear that. So, you know, it seems to get get a lot of, uh, I don't know, I, just, I guess also because of the pandemic, I haven't been able to get out and play it everywhere and so I'm seeing audiences for the first time who've got it and and, and they're able to tell me stuff and, show me the album cover artwork tattooed on their arm and stuff, which I've seen a few times now and stuff, which is always there's like a, really there's, special. There's, yeah, no, I mean, there's a, that's something else that um, intrigue. I mean, I agree with all of that. And there's something else that intrigues me as well, which is the Dom unity, because it seems to be much more, because again, because of your turn, perhaps, it seems to be very different from just a fan group. It seems to be people that are talking to each other rather than talking yeah, to yeah. you, which I think... It is really genuine and of course saying hey look at this hey if the group likes this and they seem to be on the facebook yeah the facebook yeah, they group seem to be really lovely yeah. it's, it's one of the one it's one I, I tend to follow obviously k-scope artists and see what they're up to and other people as well but that's the only one that i don't skip past okay but, people do, it's not i don't put you know i'm, I'm not like just using it as a promo outlet of course like not. it's no, much no. more like yeah it, it is supposed to be a discussion group and another yeah. thing is that a lot of my fans and musicians and they they want to show people their music as well, and that's really fun. And yeah, people like to talk about stuff and um, talk about you know their experience with um, music that's not necessarily even my music, which is totally fine. And that's what it's for, you know. It's uh, fully encouraging, and and I'm much more likely to reply to a thread than I am to start one, you know, which is uh, which is really nice. So. Yeah, it's great. I'd, and it's funny, I do feel like I know quite a lot of people who who uh, who listen to my music. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how, how real that is, but I do feel like I do. So, yeah, that's nice. 
talk to me about the Swan Song Project. So the Swan Song Project is a charity that um, they... So it's a guy called Ben whose uh, grandma died. And Ben is a musician and he kind of... He's one of those musicians where he started out making music with his family. Um, so his dad used to play pub gigs and stuff and that's how Ben started out going out with him and playing with him. And all of his family would just sing together and make music together. And when his grandma died, he really regretted that he didn't have a recording of her singing um, at all, let alone singing with him or anything. And he just had this idea that maybe people would like that, to have that kind of thing. And then he kind of, I guess he just, the idea went from one thing to another in his head. And he was like, well, what about if people actually were able to write a song? So not just sing something and have that recording there to to leave forever for their loved ones. But what if they actually wrote a song? Because he reckons everyone can write a song with a bit of help, even if they don't have any musical experience. So he, he tried it out. The first one he wrote actually wasn't with, um, wasn't with somebody. So it's so you write basically what he does is he people who are approaching their end of lo- the end of their life. So it's usually people who are terminally ill. Um, he writes songs with them, but he will also write songs with people who are suffering from, who are recently bereaved or anything like that. So anything around kind of bereavement. But um, the first one he did was in a hospice, but he actually did it with the staff in the hospice. He was like just to try it out before they do anything else and it went so well and they enjoyed doing it so much because obviously people who work in a hospice that they have their own emotional stuff you know what i mean uh so they they did that and they found it so amazing and ben is such a an easy person to do that with because he's just such a calm kind of he's such a great listener he's so open and i don't know he's just a really he's somebody that you kind of instinctively trust he's a very kind person so um, yeah, so then he started doing this with uh, patients in the in the hospice, and then he's been doing it ever since. He's done um, well over a hundred songs now. Been doing it for a few years. He's just started recru- recruiting songwriters, so he's going to be actually training up other writers because there's kind of too much demand now for him to do it on his own. And um, he asked me to be the first ambassador that they've had for the charity. So I've just been trying to spread the word as much as I can. So I managed to get them on TV. It's not actually the first time he's been on TV, but I, I um, so somebody got got in touch with me to ask me if I would do a TV thing about, you know, kind of with Ben about the swans, just raising a, it's the TV show is like a reality show that's about, not a reality show. I don't know what the word is to describe it. I can't give it away, but it's a, what is, I'm not allowed to say, but it's like one of those um, programs where they kind of do a thing. Right, so um, what's next for me is tomorrow I'm going to Blackpool right. <laughs> um, for the weekend and taking my daughter to see the delights of my hometown for the first time. Oh, so she's going to go right. to the Pleasure okay. Beach. Wow, so that's very, very been, important. Wow. And she's only six, so there's not much she can, you know, she can't go on all the big rides and stuff, but she, now she's six, there is something she can go on. And I've been gear I've been gearing her up for it since she was old enough to, to go on anything. So anytime there's a fairground, like locally, we're right there. Even when she was too little to go on them, I would I would put on a, um you get these kind of um videos that people make and uh while while they're on the ride, on a roller coaster. So they and then they you can they put them on YouTube. So it's it's like a first pers- person perspective. So you feel like you're on the roller coaster. So I used to sit her in the washing basket, like a wicker washing basket, on my lap, and, and uh, she should be looking at the roller coaster. And I'd be just moving, mimicking the movements of the roller coaster. She was having this kind of interactive experience. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely training her up. So what about <laughs> music? What about musically? Uh, um, well, I've got some. Basically, this year has been getting back into the chaos of touring while having a a child for the first time really so because i did bits before um but now she's kind of older and it's 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 better it's easier and hard and harder in different ways so it's been so so my next music thing after that i'm doing a tour i'm touring in germany um in september and then uk doing about 10 gigs or something in the uk as well which is october november and then Next year, we've got stuff kind of coming in tour-wise overseas. 
but I'll be concentrating on the next kind of recording thing, which I'm not 100% sure. I've got a couple of things in mind, neither of which I've mentioned to anybody, but I can, I'll, I'll, so I'll, I'll give you a little clue. One thing I'd quite like to do, which I've been, I'm just putting my toe in the water for it now, is an instrumental album, but um, which would be kind of a compilation album of, I guess, like, not really a greatest hits album, but a compilation album of songs that I've kind of recorded before. But instrumental versions with the melodies, instead of being sung, being played by probably other guitarists on electric guitar or perhaps other instruments as well. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But I'm just working on the first one with somebody which we're going to perform in Germany um, to test it out and see how it goes. Um, because I think it, that could be something that would be really exciting. I think my music lends itself to that because of the melodies that I write and because of the kind of mus- my kind of musical background. It's often how I'm thinking anyway. So it's I, I write melodies without thinking about them being sung. Uh, that sounds weird, <laughs> but I'm not one of those people who sings out a melody. And whenever I hear melodies that have clearly been sung out, so somebody's somebody's been playing or singing along to something or just singing some words and then seeing what happens. And they, they can often sound very natural, those kinds of melodies, which is nice. But to me, I, I can find them quite boring because they can be often lacking in in like interesting kind of melodic movements and they tend to kind of step around in boring ways. But anyway, that's just me being me. But anyway, so I tend to write melodies, not thinking of them being sung, but just thinking of whatever I want the melody to be. I think, I think it'll be, it's a different angle for them, but I think, um, I think people would like it. I think I would like it to listen to it. It's a weird thing. I kind of see it from the, I don't normally see things like this way. I just think about what it'd be like for me to play, but this is something different where it's like, I just, I'm just thinking about what it would be like to listen to. (laughs) It's not what I normally, how I normally think. And I will stretch this second until the sun destroys the earth. I will extend expectance until expansion is John Gom from The Faintest Idea, the somewhat apposite until the sun destroys the earth. Do please let us know if you see John on his tour. It really is an incredible sight and sound to behold. Right, some other new K-Scope vinyl editions from the vinyl restock. Claustrophobic Universe from Marius Dudar of Lunatic Soul and Riverside. Clear single LP out now. This is the title track.
Marius Dudana, here's a cracker for your turntable. Tesseract, who smashed it at Arc Tangent recently. This from the Polaris single LP, Dystopia. Tesseract and a little glimpse into their dystopia. We heard from Marius Dudar's solo LP, Claustrophobic Universe, earlier on. His lunatic soul album, Walking on a Flashlight Beam, is now out as a blue vinyl gatefold double album. This is Gutter. Thank you. 
lunatic soul from walking on a flashlight beam. Right, a lot of information to take in there. There's a lot of uh, fuel and food uh, for your stylus. One final notice. The next Case Goat podcast is number 150. And we've got a very special long conversation with Bruce Sword from The Pineapple Thief with his drummer, Gavin Harrison of The Pineapple Thief porcupine tree king crimson and so forth about collaboration not only about uh, their relationship but about the art of collaboration with some music from k-scope's collaborative lps yeah 150 i know right so i'll leave you with some tangerine dream yes a k-scope artiste this is the double vinyl new to k-scope version of the album views from a red train and fire on the mountain Uh, while you're relaxing to this do please like share and subscribe i really don't want you to miss k-scope the podcast 150 billy reeves here speak to you soon